army. But they have learned this. If they can once get control of the money system, they can enslave you more completely than they could by military force, and what's more, they can make you pay the cost of your own enslavement. They don't even have to raise a penny of it out of their own pocket. <clears throat> the liberals have preached to us for a long time that the only function of government is to tax its unfortunate citizens into such a state of destitution that they all become dependent on the government for a handout for their living, so then they can be sternly warned, unless you vote this same administration back in power, your welfare check's going to be cut down. Perpetuate your own slavery. The other function of the government of maintaining peace should, of course, be abdicated in favor of allowing riots to go on because the rioters provide one of those minority groups that help to rule the majority. But I tell you that one of the most important functions of government is the issuance of money. Now, <clears throat> all the money there was in the original 13 colonies wouldn't be nearly enough to carry on the daily business of your one city of Bellflower today. As our nation expands, more people carrying on more business and all that, it becomes necessary to have more money in circulation with which to do it. One of the great economists of our day, Tausig of Harvard, states the quantity theory of money in this way. If it is to function as money, as a medium of exchange, which it's supposed to do, there must be an existence in circulation, one dollar in money, for every dollar's worth of property of any kind capable of being purchased with money. You are a homeowner who may someday want to sell your home, and you can't sell it unless there's a money someplace to buy it from you with. You are a merchant with a big well-stocked store, and you can't sell an article in it unless there's the money in existence in somebody's hands with which you can come and buy your products and so forth. We have a modest part of 1% of enough money to meet that test, which has compelled us for lack of money to do business on bank credit, which costs us in interest. Now, I'm not making a general attack upon your local banker for the reason that, in allowing the Babylonian economic system to take us over, we have made the bank a necessity. If we were under the laws of God, we wouldn't need as big a police force as we need now. I believe we ought to be under the laws of God. I don't go around crusading to fire half the police force now. I only wish we had more police as long as we insist on staying under the Babylonian system instead of God's law. So I'm not conducting a crusade to abolish your local banking system because you can't do it until you set up God's economic system complete. If you've got a dollar in money, you can spend a hundred cents of it. And if you have to go and borrow it, you probably can spend only 93 cents of it because you're paying probably 7% interest. And today they take out the interest in advance before they let you have the money. Which means, therefore, that you can put less and less money back in circulation. It's not merely that your purchases are cut down, but since you can't spend as much, the merchant can't sell as much, he can't hire more employees, he can't pay more wages or higher wages, and so the thing runs in a vicious circle. Now, that is merely the minor part of it. Your local bank starts with so many million dollars paid in capital by people who buy shares of stock in it. They've got that much money to lend out. Then the depositors put their money in the bank, and the bank has that money to lend out. And they have discovered something to it. Now, 
it's no news to you that we have reached the point we are in the... Okay? Cinemix is a transnational company that creates flavor enhancement for products for transnational companies like Pepsi, Kraft, Nestle, Campbell's. And what they've been doing is that they grabbed uh, kidney cells from human aborted fetuses. So they grab these kidney cell lines, las células sanguíneas de, de los riñones de bebés abortados, and in laboratory they replicate these cells and they put them in all your products. So put in los productos. What products are we talking about? Well, we're talking about your Gatorade. Drink some aborted babies. Yes, seriously. We're talking about lace chips. Yeah, that's why they taste so good, don't they? Uh, Pepsi products, all right? Tropicana juices, Dasani water, Minute Maid. We have to not consume anything from these companies. And tell them that we're going to participate in their insane ritual. Message on Mount Rubidoux, the words Google Flat Earth were found carved into the Riverside Hill in letters that were 10 feet long. Please talk to the person who did it. He's not facing charges yet. Crews reseeded the area so the grass will grow and cover it all up. One possible explanation of the message, some still believe the world is flat, not round, and post about it online. It's called the Flat Earth Conspiracy Theory, but police are not saying whether that's what the hillside message is all about. Pythagoras of Samos is noted to be one of the first humans in recorded history to ascertain the idea of a spherical earth. Oddly enough, Pythagoras is titled as being possibly one of the very first Freemasons of the ancient Masonic order by Masons such as Albert Mackey. His model of a spherical earth tilted on an axis revolving around a stationary sun was taught as more of a thought experiment and Pythagoras did not offer up any experimental evidence of this claim. This early heliocentric model does not prove in any way that Earth is a sphere, so I don't see why it's still being brought up in discussions as somehow being veritable proof of the globe. Plato was one of the next people who accepted a globular heliocentric model. His student, Aristotle, argued that the reason the hull of a ship disappears first as it sails away is because the ship gradually curves downward over the curve of the earth at the horizon. This theory is obviously flawed and can be easily disproven. As a ship sails further and further away, it appears to shrink and get smaller starting with the bottom, or hull, due to perspective and the human eye being limited in vision. This can be proven with an easy experiment that you can try for yourself. Go to the beach and look at a boat and watch it sail away and disappear and then pull out a high power zoom camera, a pair of binoculars, or even a telescope, and bring the entire ship back into view. The boat did not sail over a curve, but rather just sailed out of sight. It has nothing to do with the magical curvature of the earth, and everything to do with human eyesight. Another point Aristotle argued was eclipses, but his argument has been excellently debunked multiple times, and by the way, you shouldn't be looking up to the sky to determine the state of what lies beneath your feet. That's like looking up to the curved ceiling of St. Peter's Basilica and arguing that the floor of the Vatican is curved also. It's just not a good argument to be made. Eratosthenes is often brought up by heliocentrists as proof of a distant sun and Earth's curvature due to the different lengths of shadows cast in different places. Eratosthenes described how at high noon in Syene, no shadow was cast, and the sun's rays could reach to the bottom of his well. In Alexandria, a metal rod placed vertically casted a significant shadow. However, this can occur on a flat earth and a globe earth. Eratosthenes had concluded that rather than the shadows being cast in different angles due to the sun's crepuscular rays, instead, 
the shadows were cast in different angles due to the Earth's alleged curvature. The main problem is that Eratosthenes made his calculations assuming the sun's rays to be perfectly parallel. But this is not what reality shows. By using sextants, plane trigonometry, and human eyesight, we can observe that the sun's rays are not parallel, and Eratosthenes' observations do not prove Earth is a globe, but work just as well on a flat Earth. Freemason Sir Isaac Newton is credited for coming up with the unproven theory of gravity. He insisted that instead of objects falling due to the laws of density and buoyancy, rather objects fell due to a mysterious pulling force known as gravity. We are told that gravity is the reason water curves around the ball Earth, and keeps us stuck from flying off from the Earth's breakneck speed. Of course, this force can be observed nowhere in the natural world, and cannot be tested and proven in any form of experiments. Many people will say, but scientists discovered gravitational waves, and then they proceed to show you a CGI animation of how gravity works. First of all, if gravity was real, then it shouldn't have taken you 500 years just to have your only evidence be a CGI cartoon. Like, I'm just saying. If you try spinning a wet tennis ball, the water will fly off in every direction, no matter how